Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we're going to be playing a Demir Surveil mid-range deck. Uh, the season reset, we fell just short of Mythic, uh, but we'll be playing uh, to try to rank up again. Um, so this deck is built around the Surveil mechanic, which was from uh, Ravnica. It is tied to the Demir guild. Um, so with Surveil, you can look at the top card of your library and choose to put it into your graveyard. Uh, surveil the numbers, the amount of cards you can look deep into your deck. Um, so what we're trying to do is abuse disinformation campaign. So when this enters the battlefield as an enchantment, you draw a card opponent discards. When you surveil, you return this to your hand. Um, so what we're trying to do is play a more grindy matchup. So trying to take away the card advantage of certain decks. Um, so the way we do this is we have like Lazav that can surveil. We have um, Discovery Dispersal and Thought Erasure. Um, of note, we're not playing Sabotage main, Sinister Sabotage. Um, we're playing more creature based as opposed to counter, so we're not really holding up our mana in a traditional sense. Um, the rest of the deck is kind of discardy, disruption, removal style. Um, so we have Yark's Fen Lurker to cause some more discard and exile from your opponent's hand, uh, Tyrant's Scorn to either bounce our own creatures and reset or deal with early aggression. Uh, Lazav can become a copy of creatures in the graveyard. So you can kind of copy some of your bigger threats. Uh, four Brazen Boros for tempo play as well as Flash. A couple Murderous Riders. Thassa to get all these blink effects again. Uh, Oracle for card advantage. Cavalier. Sorry, I'm just going to let the dog in. Come on. Anna, go. Go. Sorry about that. Um... And then uh, some Cavaliers, we can sack the smaller things. Yeah, she kept like wanting to bark to come in. Uh, she smells her, her treats in the room. Um, then we have Discovery, uh, so both sides are fairly reasonable. You can also force them to bounce like Dream Trawler or something like that. And then Lillian is a way to deal with Dream Trawler along with Ashiok. Mana base, pretty simple. Um, we have... The castles, a field of ruin, a couple of fable passages, and some duels. Sideboard wise is a little bit more transformative if we need to go controlly route. Uh, disfigure versus mono red and aggro. Agonizing remorse versus control. Dispute versus control. Ashiok for like Uro decks or anything using to its graveyard. Ritual of Soot uh, is for the more aggressive decks. Our creatures tend to be smaller than mono red. Uh, Nightville Predator is something to actually play against the Dream Trawlers. It uh, can't be bounced, can't be targeted by uh, Elspeth Conquer's death, and it can block Dream Trawler with the Death Touch, and then enter the God Eternals for the aggro-based matchups. So we'll play it through. Um, I'm probably going to play one in ranked first, see how it goes, and then um, we'll play it in a ranked match. I haven't played this deck yet, so I just want to see how it actually plays out before we play in some ranked matches, see if any of the numbers need to be changed. So played in the MCQ over the weekend, or MPC, Mythic Points Championship. Went 3-3, three and three, not the best showing. Um, but it was cool to play in that kind of tournament. Made some punts and it was really exemplified. Um, and uh, we're here now, so play some more. Yeah, Quantum. Uh, the old uh, Esper control list with this used to be awesome. Or even like the Grixis decks with Nico Bolas. When you get it going, it really grinds them at a card advantage. Um, I'm going to keep this hand just because we can also surveil off this. So we can go Fen Lurker and then hopefully find a blue source. If we do find a blue source, we have quite a bit of card advantage. Or like card disruption. Opponent is thinking here. So as we wait for our opponent, as always, if you do enjoy the content, whether it be live on Twitch or on YouTube, if you can drop a follow or a sub on YouTube, a uh, free and easy way to help. Um, and as always, if you can, leave a comment, like, anything like that. So this can be a couple decks, could be Black Red Cleave. Yeah, so it's probably black red cleave. So we do need to hit a blue source here. Not gonna block here. Just 
just not going to hit the blue source now. Um, I'm going to keep both actually. I think we may block this turn just because okay, so they have black lines. So we can block the black lines. And if they ever try to like Ember Cleave, we can hold this up the following turn. Even with Rotting Regisar. That might be coming down now. So we, we can do the tempo play with Regisar of bouncing it. Ah, they're gonna probably take the Borer. See if they take Atreus here. Tyrant Scorn is also pretty decent here. Okay, they take the Borrower. Let me go Stormfist. Um, so I think I want to do it before. So they can cleave this turn. Thought Erasure, they have two draws at cleave, or I can take down the Stormfist Crusader, and that prevents them from playing cleave this turn. We take another point of damage. I think we just do this. This way here, they don't get the card draw. Probably should have pushed the castle away. It's not really helping with this hand. We needed two blue sources to double spell. They're going to spend their whole turn pumping it, then it's fine. They're not putting too much pressure on us, and this is doing a good job holding back the knight. Okay, they got Rotting Regisar. So we can try to duck a turn. So I'm going to let him discard and then I'm going to Murderous Rider the Regisar. is playing slow for an aggressive deck. The nice thing is Fenlurker is doing a decent job of just holding back Knight, uh, Black Lance Paragon. They're being fairly conservative with Knight of Even Legion. Okay, Stormfist. It's probably the Atris. Okay, so I think we just keep the Campaign's not bad. So they could turn on Ember Cleave regardless if they have it. So. I think what we do is just pass the turn here. No blocks, see if they pump mana into this. Not drawing lands this game. And 
and then just kill this. So pretty much fogs them for the turn. We take two points of damage. But they don't get to advance their board state. So I'm going to do this in case we draw a blue source. Okay, there's a swamp. Fenlurker gives us another play, but they're likely not going to have much in hand, so I'm going to bottom this. Just pass the turn. Do you need to find... Okay, so it's probably Embercleave. No. Not quite. Next turn, I'm going to go Murderous Rider here. And the Thought Erasure. Just to put him back campaign to hand. Or maybe we don't. Just. Okay, they just play Gutter Bones out. Dispersal is actually good because it bounces Ember Cleave if they play it. Uh, rituals are in the sideboard, Quantum. So let me do this. So this can find me a Brazen Borrower, but I can't cast Brazen anyway, so let's just do this this turn. And then probably just do this. It's more to bring this back to hand. Like, we're punished if we draw... Yeah, we just drew a land, so it's fine. We need to get this off the table. Wow, they just concede. It's interesting. They could still have tacked in. Uh, so this figure is good in this matchup. Rituals and the... Okay. We'll run another one. I want to play an actual match to see how it goes. It's odd, they should have the, like, they're plenty aggressive enough, and with the combo finish. They saw our hand too, we weren't a traditional control deck. Try this hand out. So Lazav's okay against Mono Red, but this was definitely a matchup that was tough. So I want to set up Lazav in case I could find something better in the graveyard. I don't think campaign is where we want to be at for this matchup. I'm going to save this Brazen Borrower for the Steamkin. Reset that. I'm going to do this if they have Rimrock Knight. They waste it there. Because in that case there, they likely Rimrock anyways. I don't want Castle. Steamkins is one of the cards that like when it goes off, it goes off. So I'm just killing it now because it's at 3, or at 2, so any card they can start cycling mana through. And then I can have this Brazen Borrower deal with the next one. Basically just want to try to get to Ashiok at this point. Uh, that's troublesome, because now they attack us for 4. Pop it, and then it comes back. Fenlurker is actually good because it gives us a blocker here. Gets the last card out of hand. Nah, Scorch Splitter is not really an issue. A 
Oi. That is a frightening one. So what I'm going to do here is block like this. Bounce that. Oh no, I'm dead anyways. Because the problem is with Ashiok, and then I can't do the exile, I can't block. It's too much pressure there. Mono Red's gonna be tough. So that's why we have these figures, the rituals, and the God Eternals. Um, coming out campaign, I don't think is that good in this matchup. Uh, Discoveries probably too slow. Actually, cut the Liliana, cut the Thassa. Fenlurkers are just bodies to block. The Thassa is not really a huge amount of value in this matchup. Actually, Thought Erasures probably don't want those, do I? Probably bring in these. They're hard to deal with. I just want stuff to play to the board. So maybe Liliana? Nah, Liliana's too high on curve. I don't want to draw the Liliana. Like, it probably wins us the game, but they could still Ember Cleave over it. Um, sure, we can... This figure into Fen Lurker. Field of Ruins not as good, so maybe keeping this is wrong. Let's see what we can do. I just want to be like mana efficient. What did they exile? Rimrock Knight. So Fervent's a little annoying. Oh, so this is more of a some of the older builds. So it's important to keep them off creatures in this matchup. Enter the God Eternals. Um, Brazen's fine, I think. If they get something big down, we can bounce it. I wonder if this is a Cavalcade version. I'm surprised they attacked with this. Light up the stage. Okay, so they brought Chandra's in against us. And Steamkin. Both are quite annoying. So I'm probably going to take a land just for God Eternals on this Steamkin. And then what I can do is in a turn... Even just Discovery, depending on how they play out their hand. Because I can bounce it and Thought Erasure it. We'll see how they attack in here. They might just do these two attacking in. Oh, they go everything. So here, I can take this off the battlefield. Now I think we do this. No, but that could be Rimrock Knight. As the last card in hand. Yeah, I, th I think that's fine. It soaks up damage on us. 
We're going to gain some life from uh, God Eternals this turn. This figure is also nice. It's just more uh, cleanup. So let's get rid of that. And they can... I think we actually mill ourselves. Do we? Makes a thing better. Uh, Lazav. What are the chances? Now let's mill them. I don't think they have Phoenix. We hit an Ember Cleave, which is nice. So next turn, I can go Brazen Borrower, Thought Erasure, and Disfigure. If they play out their whole hand, then I can just do Dispersal on the Chandra. I think that like pure Demir control without a dedicated board wipe is probably too hard. The double night turns a little annoying. Okay, so they're valuing their knights. So we're gonna bounce this. Uh, uh, why did it tap like that? So now we have to shock. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Murderous Rider's fine. And just pass the turn. Sorry, didn't need to shock there. But it valued having this up. Murderous Rider is good for this Torbrand that'll come down next turn. I want them to put the counters on Rimrock Knight so then I can disfigure it. And then that lets us So I think with this figures in the main, it makes this matchup a lot more bearable. Because we take a point of damage there, but we get to take them off both knights. Scorch Bitter is not really an issue. So I'm gonna do this now. Don't have enough for Yark, and they don't have anything in hand, so I don't think I want either of those. Tyrant Scorn's also nice uh, as a follow up. So I'm going to do this before they attack so they don't get the trigger off uh, Scorch Spitter. Sweet. Took him down. Godio, thanks for the follow. Um, I think we run it back. Question is, do we want to change anything? We know they have Chandra now. So a couple Thought Erasures with Brazen Borrowers, probably fine. I think we just run it back. We just got to try to avoid the Chandra. Um, I think this hand's fine. We have Thought Erasure to get something big out of their hand. And then we have Ritual of Soot. That'll clean us up. Really want to get like Ember Cleave or Chandra out of hand. Um, I actually am going to take Annex here. Yeah, I think we take Annex, and I'm going to keep that for now. Make them play out a bit more to the board. The reason for doing that is um, this leaves tokens behind after. And we don't have a second way to clean up the tokens. 
And that also is their play this turn. Of course they draw that then. So I'm going to Murderous Rider this. Yeah, we got him. It's not ideal, but I need to do this now. And the problem is with Torbran, we can't... It doesn't get caught by Ritual. And this is why Demir has been weaker than Blue-White Control. Just not having a like a hard removal spell like a hard board wipe really wish we could have picked this off with the thought erasure because our hand or it was supposed to be Th temple to see tyrant scorn this they might not have the land this turn They attack in, it's four, they play this, they get a mana. Wonder if they go Fervent Knight? Well they can do both. Okay, so they go Torbran. See if they go the Fervent Knight as well. Play it. Play it. Sweet. Okay, so they will have Torbran out. It'll attack for four, which kind of sucks, but at least we Ritual here. And then I can... Depending on what we draw, I can always bounce this. I can also play out Night Veil Predator. Kinda dead. Yeah, untapped land. Okay, cool. So what we can do here is when they attack, I can bounce this, block this, gain the life. They might have something like stomp in hand, where if they target this, when I bounce this, then it only deals two damage. Okay, they go full value, light up the stage. So we're going to bounce this. Block here. Gain the most life possible. Who with Thought Erasure. The only problem is we're taking a point of damage and we're actually taking one, two, three. So we still don't die specifically to that um, so let's let's thought erasure this out we're still short of mana I think that's fine in case we draw this figure. So Fenlurker we don't want. Um, even just playing this for the life gain is probably relevant. If they have Ember Cleave we're dead. They've been really good at drawing the Chandra. And the problem too is they can pump this. So I can't actually play that out. Just 
just like super timely. That's twice they've drawn it at the perfect moment. I'm dead here. So the thing is I have to do it on this because the first strike damage with the plus would... Oh no, I can block here still a first strike. I take two, four, yeah, I still die. Because I gain two. Yeah, I'm just going to draw a land there. We are basically a mana short. Twice the Chandra just came down. Because I block here. They pump, I gain two, but I take four, and then we're dead. Mono red's gonna be uh, a tough one regardless for this deck. I really wanna play against blue white control with it. I think we could grind them out a bit. We'll run one more, see how it goes. Puppy, how are you? She's been like sitting by my side this whole time. We're not really good at drawing lines with this deck. Um, I'm more likely to need double black in this deck. We're not winning. I'm gonna. We already played against the mono red matchup. This isn't ranked. I want to demo the deck against a couple different decks to see what we need. Like we already know the mono red matchups worse. Like probably one of the worst ones. So I can build a deck differently to do a bit better against that. But I want to try to play against something else. I'm thinking we cut Thassa from the deck. I don't think it's doing enough in our particular build to really have any advantage. Even just something like another Atris could be more valuable. Like I thought that like it's cute, but more and more I'm finding Atris just not doing enough. Oh, big yawn. This hand's interesting. Let's see how it goes. So this is an important thing, like when you're testing out a new deck, this is an adventure that I like having campaign. Um, like you're not necessarily always just looking how many wins and losses you have. You wanna see, relatively speaking, how the deck itself's performing. Um, so they can cast an adventure next turn and draw a card. So I think I'm gonna just bounce this now. Like at this point, I don't care when loss record. They don't have red mana. Something that's interesting. So let's get campaign going. Oh, what deck is this? Growth Spiral? Okay, so they hit the red source. This is actually pretty nice because I could campaign next turn. Okay, so they're gonna have Love Struck, it'll draw them a card. I can bounce the Love Struck again. Sacrifice another creature you control. So let's go Atris here. Can either draw us into removal or it gives us something that we can sack to the Cavalier. And then I can get rid of this Love Struck Beast. Um, 
think we take the two. Okay, so we ended up getting one more card in just terms of the line there. And neither of these cards is not really advantageous for them to bounce with Brazen Borrower, which is nice. Bay of Wishes. So it's not bad. That means shields are down right now. That's going to give them a lot of value. Um... I think we just dropped Cavalier here. So I'm gonna attack first. It's unlikely they double block. So we get some damage on. They don't really gain life in this deck. So sacrifice this. Let's kill the Love Struck Beast. And then next turn I can campaign campaign get them to discard something okay so they got a clover and they got a another escape the wilds so let's play with the most information we can so let's attack in Gains us some life. Um, so I have Brazen Borrower that can bounce that. They're not really playing out of their hand right now. So I can just bring these both back to hand, but I'm not really doing that either. So let's just go, I think we just go like this, tapped. and play out Fen Lurker. If this dies, then it gives us something to get back with Cavalier. Because they have the Fae of Wishes, it can block pretty nicely against. Okay, so they're getting quite a few cards now. The problem is we can't really attack their hand when they're getting all these Escape the Wilds. Three cards. So it's probably Clover and this Love Struck Beast. So I'm going to just keep pressuring them. At least gives us life. Um, so I think let's fetch. Get a swamp. Thass is actually sweet here. I get these back to hand. Because I can keep using this to bounce, sack this, and then kill edge wall so they don't get the card draw. I think we do that. And they can't really kill it. Or I can bounce Yark's Fen Lurker. It exiles a card from hand. I think maybe we wait till the following turn for that. I want to hold up uh, Brazen Borrower this turn. Um, so they have escaped the wilds. Let's bounce this so they get less value off these escape cards. Alright, 29. Abby, come here. You want to go ahead? One sec. Go 
si Mami. Kuna, kuna. It's almost doggo's dinner time. Problem is we're not really making a dent into our opponent's life total just yet. I need something like Liliana. It's funny, once she always eats at 5 p.m., but like by like four o'clock she starts acting up. Okay, so they bone crush her here. That's kind of fine, because if this dies afterwards, I get back Fenlurker. They play second edge wall. So here, let's go Fenlurker. Because I want something for this to sacrifice to get rid of an edge wall and keeper. What do we get rid of? Got a whole bunch in exile. Ashiok could actually be really sweet here. So let's attack in. They block with this. Then I go. Thassa. I don't think we need either of these, to be honest. Brazen Borrow is actually really nice. Reset something. So I'm going to bounce this. Plays offense, defense. Sack you, kill you. Takes him off a of card draw. Sorry. So they're setting up for a lot of mana. I think they've hit. So they've only hit one Brazen Borrower yet. So they can bounce like Thassa. Sorry about that. So our 21 cards. So Tyrant Scorn is actually sweet here. I think what I want to try to do is continue to grind them out a bit. Got, got Field of Ruin as an untapped source. So I can... Brazen Borrower bounce something. So do this. I can double block and then if they, I can attack. If they double block, I can bounce one of them. So I bounce the edge wall that takes them off the bone crusher. And then just play this into play tapped. That resets my cavalier. So cavalier's been doing some work this game, quite impressed with it. We also have a couple, well really just the Arx Fen Lurkers in the yard. This is probably um, 
the fight card. So that gives it five, and they've got Chandra as well. This deck's super resilient, which is a pain in the ass. Just gonna deal five to it. Interesting. I don't think we can grind them out either, and we don't have a catch up mechanic now. Try to borrowers in the sky. But like they went from having no board position to smacking us pretty quickly. And like grinding through their hand at this point doesn't make much difference. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can drop two of these. I can drop all three brazen borrowers. They can Domri's Ambush after the fact. They have two Fae of Wishes that also block very well. And then like Ashiok doesn't do much. I think we just passed the turn. This deck's obnoxious to play against. So here they attack for 5, 6, 7, 12. And they hit us for 1, that's 13. Got another Fae of Wishes, double up. So even though we attack their hand quite mercilessly, they have a fling too. Yeah, we're dead here. I can't block anything. And they can just fling a uh, beanstalk giant. Uh, fires is good with the sweepers and then it could combo kill them. Um, it's really just, you got to keep that off the battlefield, the thing. The, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the stupid clover. Um, so Lazav in this matchup does nothing. The Fen Lurkers are fine. I want the figures for the early stuff. Yeah, Clover. Um, Ashiok is a way to kind of mill them out uh, and just exile key combo pieces. I don't think we want Thassa. Liliana is also pretty bad in this matchup. We'll have stuff in exile, but I don't think we'll ever really get to the point where Ashiok could be relevant. I might cut a couple campaigns because we have like more dedicated uh, removal or like uh, clearing. Just put like Demir Control here. Cavalier was fine that game, but I don't think it's going to be as relevant. How do we win is the question. I think we just bring these in. They can't be touched by anything. And then that's how we try to grind them out. And then try to just grind them as long as possible to win through mill. Uh, Ashiok, maybe just play one. Just get rid of the campaigns. Play it like that. I don't know. This matchup, I don't really know how to... Because the thing is, they don't really sideboard. And the thing is, with their color variants, you can't even bring in, like, key color hate cards like Noxious Grasp. Okay, we're just going, like, straight mill plan. I think I do want to hold up Borrower in case they turn to Clover. And that was my experience even on the weekend playing against this deck. You just... I'm going to keep the Disfigure on top, actually. If they turn one... Uh... Dude, then I'll... Uh...
Okay, so the edge wall here. I'm just going to disfigure this. So unfortunately, I can't Ashiok this turn. I don't think we. Brazen. Maybe we do and just play like tempo. If that's their turn, that bodes pretty well for us. This also takes off the uh, that card once and again, once upon a time, or like once again, the one that gets two cards back from their graveyard if you play three greens. So they they go for granted. And they go for that. Thought erasure, please. One time. Yeah, once upon a time was not a fun time. Um probably just want another blue. So taking two edge walls gone is actually pretty sweet. Um, I think we just do... You know what? I might just hold off here. Because their turn's going to be this. They'll play out two lands, and then they'll play out this. Because um, I just want... No, because then even if they play this out and I flash this in, there's not really much utility. Because I can't attack in. They get rid of Brazen Borrower. Okay, so they got double Clover. So my guess is they just play out the Clover this turn. So we're going to bounce the Clover. I think we're just going to try to mill them out this turn. I'm going to keep the Disfigure. It's another removal spell. It also lets us our Brazen Borrower attack through. My guess is they go this, this, and then get some lions. So they opt to do that. Let's see what their follow up play is. They just go beanstalk here. And then they're going to play out the other Clover. So I think what I do is I flash in this Brazen Borrower. We have the Disfigure if need be. Play out another one of these and just start exiling again. So they do have double clover up, which is pretty terrible. Okay. Let's see what the follow up is here. Um, so I need to bounce something here. It's 
honestly probably just Beanstalk. Because then this guarantees that it's going to hit me for some stuff. And then if they're taking out more lands from their library, it's probably fine. So maybe this is the way we attack them. Just try to mill them out. This can't block, so it's fine. And I play a 12 12. See if they go play another 12 12. Interesting, they go face here. So let's go. They go another brazen borrower. No, I think we do this. They might have negate or disdainful stroke up, or they might just have oh, just triple bone crusher. Nah, that gets rid of Ashiok. Like they're down to 18 cards. We have Ritual to clean up a lot of the stuff here. The issue is we don't have anything currently to deal with this second Beanstalk Giant. They fail to find. Like they're thinning out their deck. So what I can do is I can block here. I take two still, but I gain that two back and I get to take it off the battlefield. Ay ay ay, you're not helping the case. So I block this beanstalk, they play a second beanstalk. Don't think the mill plan's gonna work. 